right, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make Newton's Cradle on your custom live wallpaper. And let's go ahead and have a look at some things we can customize real quick. Now, I'm going to show you how to make this step by step, but I only have two globals here. And the two globals are Dur for duration. That's a number global. We can make this uh, thing slower. I'll just give it a second to reset. As you can see, now it looks kind of jacked up. But if I save this, go back to the home screen, it's going to be a slower Newton's Cradle. As you can see there, it's not moving as fast. And then if we go back in here and bump that duration down, then we can uh, make it a little bit quicker, right around 10, which is equivalent to one second is what I find that works best. Now this mid, I have a little on off switch. I called it mid. If I cut this off, what you're gonna notice is that the middle two, not the very middle one, not the blue one, but this one with the three and the two, which is just showing the time, by the way. Uh, these are not bouncing or moving, but if I cut the mid on, as you can see, those do move with Newton's Cradle. So a little option there as to whether you want that animation there or not. So let's go inside of items. Go ahead and add yourself an overlap group. And the one I'm gonna show you first is the mid. The mid is gonna be this middle one that does not move at all. This is a good one for me to show you the basics of building the ball with the string. And uh, then I'll come back and show you the top bar. But the middle one's not animating at all. And inside of this overlap group, I have a rectangle. That's gonna be the string. I also have a circle and then some text. The circle is going to be that blue circle that you see there. I have it size set to 80. You can pick whatever size you want, but I'm going to pick 80 here. Also, this is the one that's blue just so you can uh, reference to the one that I'm talking about for this first part. Now the text is just going to be the colon. That's going to be the time in between. You know, right now it's what 327. So that's all I have there. Now what's important about this though is this rectangle here. Now I'm gonna take this rectangle and I'm going to change the layering. So I'm gonna drag it uh, down to here. And what that just did, if I zoom in, this rectangle is now over top of the blue circle. To show you that a little bit more, let me take this rectangle and I'm gonna change its color just so that you can see it. And what I'm also gonna do with this rectangle so you can see it is I'm going to make it a little bit thicker so I'm gonna change its width. Now you can clearly see that the red rectangle is in front of this blue circle. Now the position is what's important here. The position of this rectangle, I have some bottom padding set up, but I'm gonna take that bottom padding off just so you can see how everything is set up inside of here. By the way, this entire overlap group, this entire overlap group that I've called mid, it is positioned in the center of the screen. That's important as well. So going back to that rectangle that I have moved in front of the blue circle, right now its position is in the center of this entire overlap group. But if we apply enough bottom padding to move it up to where it's about halfway, uh, that's too far, but where it's about halfway touching the middle of this blue circle come to find out the bottom padding is 300 that actually matches the height of my rectangle so if you made your height 400 you'd want to make your bottom padding 400 to show you that if i bump up the height of this rectangle up to 400 now and if i come back to the position of this rectangle and if i bump up its bottom padding to 400, as you can see, the center of that rectangle is still right there where it needs to be. So that's a way to help you remember. And you also want to keep this number in mind as well when we go and do some animations right here in a minute. But for now, I'm gonna set these back to 300. Now, it's totally fine that I have this rectangle uh, a little bit thicker and a different color. It's no big deal. It's just a string, okay? And I'm gonna layer this back behind the text and the circle. That way we put the string, as you can see, the red rectangle did go back behind the circle now. So it looks like a string. Now, from here, we can take this and we can copy and paste it. Now, I'm gonna show you how to make this left one over here, the red circle that has the zero on it right here. So paste it and you can rename this overlap group, but pretty much it's the same setup, but now we need to change the position of this overlap group. The position of the entire left ball that you see right here, it still is in the center of the screen, but recall that my circle size was 80. My circle, that blue circle a moment ago, I said it was 80. I want to move it over two circles, therefore 80 times two is 160, but I'm using negative 160 to move it to the left. 
So if your circle was 100, you'd want to move it over negative 200. That way you can cover two full circles as you move it to the left. I hope that makes sense. Now, what you also want to do for the string, you still got that same thing copied and pasted over. You still got the same circle. Maybe you want to change your color and maybe you want to change your text. If you're doing something like the time that I have here, uh, I'll show you the little code that I have there. And the code that I have here is DFHH. That's a two digit hour, the current hour, and I'm cutting the first one. So I want to see that first number in my hour, which is a zero because the time is currently 333. Now, for this entire overlap group, the left ball, let's go over to its animation. We do have a complex animation here. I have it set to loop. I have complex animation. The ease is set to straight. And now we want to remember that bottom padding and the length of our string. So inside of our complex animation, at 0%, I have my rotate Y center set to negative 300. That's going to do the rotation. If I take this off, I tell you what, let's delete that for right now. Leaving everything else up there, what this is going to do is it's going to take this overlap group, and this is the center of the overlap group right here. So notice we are kind of rotating about the center, which is right here. And the reason why the center is there, because that's where our circle is, that's where our time is, and this rectangle had some bottom padding on it. The center of our overlap group is still right there. So notice it is rotating around that center. I don't want to do that. I want my Y center to be up here. I want it to rotate like this one over here. Notice this one's rotating around that pivot point. So I want my pivot point to be up here. So going into our animator, setting that back at 0%, we want the rotate Y center and we want it to be at negative 300 because KOWP to go up, we're actually using a negative Y value there. So I had that back where it needs to be. Rotate. Um, what we want to do here is apply an overshoot to this and how many ever degrees uh, if you're working on the left hand side use positive angles when we go to the other side we will use negative angles right here in a moment and then that's for the first 25 percent then at 50 percent of the animation we want to go back to zero degrees so this is what's going to move it to the left and then back and it's only doing it for the first 50 percent of the animation you'll see why right here in a moment let's make sure we apply that by pressing check and now notice our pivot point is different. It pivot points up here instead of being down here, which gives the illusion that it's hanging from this bar. Now for my duration, I have it set to GVDUR. And all the other settings in here, I don't think I change anything. Of course, I do have that set to straight, uh, anchors module center, and I don't have anything changed down here. So now let's take this left overlap group and let's copy and paste it. And we're going to create the right overlap group. Now what's going to happen there when you copy and paste it, you need to change your position now to the positive X value because you're moving over here to the right. Notice I'm using a positive 160, whereas over here we had a negative 160. So this is the one we're working on now. Change the color of your circle if you'd like. And now what we want here is the minutes and we want the second one in our minutes. So DFMM. So right now the time is 337. So I want to cut the minutes. After the first one, I want to show one digit. So after the first digit, that's what that stands for. I want to show one digit. That's what that one stands for right there. After one, show me the next one. That's the way I think about that. Now, inside of the animation for this right ball with the string, complex animation, of course, this should already be set up because you did copy and paste. But what you want to make sure you change here, um, that negative 300, that stays the same because that's the length of our string. That is the amount of bottom padding that we added. Just make sure you change your rotate to negative 10. And you also need to change your percentages here. So at 50%, I don't want this thing to move anywhere. At 50%, it's rotating at zero. Then at 75%, it's gonna shoot off to the right 10 degrees. That's what that negative 10 stands for. And then at 100%, it's gonna go back to zero. So really what's happening here is this. The left ball, the first one we created that moved, it's animating for the first 50%. This right ball is animating for the second 50%, which gives us our total of 100%. That's how we're going to get the left from 0 to 50. And on the right one, we're going to get it from 50 to 100%. I hope that makes sense there. But again, change your signs. But the rotate Y center does stay the same. And again, just make sure you change those percentages to match like mine.
same ease, same anchor, change your GV Dur. That way you can quickly adjust the time that Newton's cradle operates. And then last but not least, we have uh, these two balls here, the left and the right. So let's copy to get your left mid. The left mid is gonna be this one right here, the one with the three and the purplish pink color. A uh, way you can kind of create that one a little bit faster is go to your left one that we've created, copy and paste that, rename it if you want to. Now, what this one is here, this is the second digit of my hours. So very similar to the DFMM after one show one, except we're doing DFHH, so the two digit hours. After the first one, I only want to see one digit after it. So that's how we're getting that three. So that's how we have the zero three for our three o'clock or 340 right now. The position of this entire left mid overlap group, if we look here, it's gonna be at negative 80 because we only want to move one ball over to the left. And then for our animation, what we wanna do here is pretty much very similar to what we did with the left ball, uh, complex animation straight, I'll talk about the little code that I have with loop right here in a second, but the rotate Y center still at negative 300. Again, changing that pivot point I discussed earlier. And at 25%, we just don't want to rotate as much. You know, uh, the far left ball we had going around 10 degrees. I had this one going around two degrees. Again, setting that to overshoot. And then we're at 50%, we're back to a rotate of zero. So it's basically going to return back to where it came from. Now the code here I have for loop, if I check on that code here, basically what I wanna do here is this. This is how I'm trying to disable those balls in the middle moving if I want them to move or not. Recall at the beginning of the tutorial, I had an on off switch GV mid. So this code means if GV mid is on, if GV mid, then we want to loop underscore FW. That just stands for loop a single way, not loop with return. I'm using a single loop because I'm letting my complex animation handle uh, going up and coming back down with the rotate to 10 and then back to zero or the rotate to two degrees and back to zero. But if GV mid is off, I want this entire animation to be disabled. That's how I was able to cut that switch on and off earlier and this three and four that you see here were not moving because I had that code applied to my react on piece right there. And then last but not least, let's take that left mid, let's copy and paste, and let's create the right mid. This is the one with the four. Its position is going to be at positive 80. And if we go back to our items, let me show you how to get the first digit of your minutes, just in case you don't know, because this is the first digit of DFMM. So if we only have one number here on the end, I want to cut DFMM. I only want to see that first digit. That's how I'm getting that four in 343. Go into its animation, make yours match mine. Again, we've copied and pasted, so we had that same loop code. If GV mid is on, I want to loop. Otherwise, I want it to be disabled. And again, make sure you're doing loop underscore FW. That's just a standard loop that is not loop with return. Our complex animation, make sure you change your percentages. So from 50 to 100% is when this thing's going to rotate negative two degrees. It's the same thing as the left mid ball, except now we have the right mid ball, same number of degrees, but we want it to go to the right instead of to the left. And we want this to happen for the second half of our animation from 50% to 100%. So make these match up like I have them and you should be good to go. And then last but not least, all we need is our bar, our top bar. It's just a plain old rectangle. I have it positioned in the center of my screen and I applied a Y offset of negative 300. So what this is simply doing is originally the bar is right here in the middle of the screen. And since the length of my string and the number I used for my bottom padding was 300, I'm using that Y offset of negative 300. Again, if your string was 400, you would use 400 for this piece just to make the bar match up right there. Now with all of that said, granted you use the GV Dur in all of those uh, animation durations, you can adjust your Dur here to make it slower or faster. You can cut your mid on and off, which is going to disable these two middle balls that we have right here. So something like that, that doesn't look too bad, honestly. Or you can probably tweak with the angle some more, maybe mess with the ease, whether it be normal, overshoot, bounce, I don't know, throw your own little twist on it. But this is just one way of many ways that you can create Newton's Cradle and KOWP. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.